Hey guys, it's Drake and Gluple on another adventure. I'm driving to a place called Taos, New Mexico to a museum called the Mellicent Rogers Museum. I am going to be interviewing a famous artist here in New Mexico and she will be giving us some tips and tricks, the lowdowns as to what to look for with art and how to purchase art. Uh, some things you should follow, some rules, some guidelines, uh, some information that you might want to look up so that you can make an informed, educated decision when you are looking at purchasing some artwork. It's all good. Let's go. Bonita. So this is the Pastel Society of New Mexico, and this is one of the famous artists of the Pastel Society of New Mexico. this is one of my paintings. We're getting to your painting. Sure, absolutely. Good to have for my 
this is one of your other friends, Lee, right? Yeah, that's Lee. Anybody else you'd like to point out who you think is but, really good? Well, I, mean, I know all Does, these people. I know all these people. Is Sarah good? I don't understand. She's Sarah St. George? Yeah, she's from Colorado. I don't know her. I know Diane. If I, He's a friend of mine too. I know him and his wife very well. Okay. Wait a minute. This is yours too. Why yeah. don't you stand in front of that? Well, I didn't stand in front of that one. Well, we we're going to get that one too. Come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Let's let's bring this out. Should I be shooting this in 4K? Okay, whatever. I don't know. Where's the, where's the other one there? Let's get Marilyn over here. What's the what's the story about Lucy over here? Is it a bad story? Or a good story? No, it's a good story. This is the lady that we met at the at the gallery, Virginia. And he's a friend of mine. That comes okay. to the studio to draw. Okay. And that's okay. Sarah again. Okay. And he looks at the Las Cruces. This looks like one of your subject matter, but it's not. It, well, but is I that? A, I mean, that's pretty classic. I though, have a painting it? of the same model in the same pose because Gay comes to our drawing groups all the time. Got it. Got it. So, so let me ask you this here, so, since you're on camera. Hey, yeah. a little. For you, when so, when someone's looking for a pastel, yes, and you're just getting into art, you you're seeing some things. What would you tell someone who'd want to purchase? What should they look for? Should they look for? Um, I've heard the subject matter. I've heard composition about how your eye goes from one place to the other place. Obviously, it's going to boil down to what you like too in your living room. That that yes. you know, but. What would you think as far as telling someone who's basically a first timer or wants to get into it or has a little growing collection, wants to add to their collection, what would you tell them what, what they should look for? Well, and you can use some of these paintings as examples, don't have to be yours. Yeah. Well, you know, what do you like about once, these certain artists? Once, once you like a painting and what the painting is of, then you could research about the artist and find out if the artist has a uh, history of like being an award winning artist, how long they've been. Do you like how it has been framed? Has it been handled professionally? Pastels are extremely durable. You can find paintings pastel paintings done in the 1600s that are actually in better shape than oil paintings done at the same time because 
pastel doesn't crack and do the things that oils do. No, pastel has oil in it though, doesn't it? No, pastels are the same pigment that's used in oil paint. The pigment is suspended in oil, in oil paints, and in, for pastels, it's mixed with a dry binder and a liquid like distilled water to create a paste. That's what pastel in French is paste. And so they've made a paste of the pigment and then you lay the pigment onto a surface. Now you can go really light with pastels or really dark, correct? You can do all kinds of wonderful things with pastels. So as evidenced by all the paintings here, there's no shortage of techniques. And, and can get very realistic, right? From oh, you from one to the yes. other. Yes, and even abstract though. I don't think we have too many abstract paintings. Well, a lot of show. landscapes. So what would you look for? I mean, these are the classics as we as we look over here. I just point this well, one that's out. A still life. Is a still life. Uh, it seems that there are some landscapes after that. Still life models. Uh, another still life. What would you tell people? Well, I really think it has to be driven by what it is that you that appeals to you and what you would want to live with. I mean, no matter how famous an artist might be or what the painting may, may be of, if you look at it and it just doesn't do anything, I mean, why would you want that? hanging where you'd have to look at it on a regular basis. You want something that when you look at it, it reminds you of a place that you have been to. 1957 Chateau Hopriand. Something that you find uplifting or calming, just something that you want to have around you. Now, people, people have said that artists use things like Fibonacci's equations, uh, oh, yeah, one, Fibonacci. two, and three. And yes. uh, So in these paintings, could you see some example? To me, this looks a little off as to the well, height and, and the subject matter. I mean... Well, I mean, there are, there are various harmonics and things you could use. Uh, this doesn't seem to follow the Standard. classic thirds that one would look at the Fibonacci thing essentially is this. The thing Could you show another painting like where it would be? Uh, those are two sort of abstract in there. Um, this one might have that because your center of interest is really here, which is sort of in a third. So this is like a third and a third and a third. And then this is third, a third, third so the interesting thing is in the upper third of the third so that's one way of doing that and when I do mine I have a little thing like I wear lines cross like important things so her eyes are falling in a place which will draw you to them when you're doing your pure it's a lot of it is composition, you know, but those are things the artist should be learning, and you don't necessarily expect a purchaser to understand that unless they've actually had some art study. But it's a it's almost subliminal thing, and people's, people tend toward wanting symmetry. And so when you look at something, you know, like something just looks off or something just looks right to you. And that's because the artist has applied these theories. Like shooting a GoPro with a, with a yeah. fisheye lens. There you go, exactly. I think this is a good example of, of how realistic you can get something. You can get it, I mean, you look You can like, get it almost picture. Yes, you right? could be photo real. I mean, it looks like you could peel those lemons or you could touch that fabric. Right, right. You know, I mean, you've got... Now, now here's a good question. What? How do you know when your painting is done? It's done. Yeah, basically, your painting is done when it, somebody else has purchased it and it's hanging in their house. <laughs> well, you, when, I, when I do videos, it's, it's, there's always something you could add. You, there, you could, could always, always put in something else. When right. is it at the point where you are, okay, that's it, it's over, I'm putting this away, and we're on to project number B? Well, there's an old joke about how it takes two artists to make a painting one who does the painting and the other one who drags the artist away from the easel <laughs> <laughs> and says it's done you've done enough check it out it's been a lot of fun if you like the content 
Please remember to subscribe, click the notifications, and hit that like button. It will be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. I'd buy that for a dollar. Bye.